We're going to find our place of reading today um, in maybe one of my uh, favorite books of the Old Bible, in the book of Romans. And uh, in Romans chapter 1, we're going to pick up our reading. We're going to read five verses of Scripture. Romans chapter 1, verse 1. And uh, I know we've been up and down a few times this morning, but uh, here in this moment, I'm going to ask you to stand with me. In fact, if you found your place or headed that direction, would you say amen? Amen. All right, would you shout amen? Amen. Let's stand together. Five very short verses of scripture. I want to preach on this thought this morning. Are you faithful to the place that God has called you? Are you faithful to the place that God has called you? Romans chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Father in heaven, Lord, we're so thankful now for this opportunity, uh, Lord, to come to church this morning. I'm so thankful for the good songs that we've heard already today. Truly, Lord, how great thou art would sum up, God, that my feelings and the feelings of this congregation today. And I pray that through your precious word that you would touch our hearts. God, that would, uh, your word would find a lodging place within our heart that we might be affected to change. And Lord, that it might help us to grow in our walk with thee. You know the need of every person here today, Father. And I pray according to the need. According to your will and the abundance of your grace and mercy. Lord, I pray that you do a great work here today. We'll certainly, Father, be thankful and appreciative and be very careful, Lord, to give you all praise. For we ask it in the marvelous name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I'm I'm just going to take my time this morning. And uh, certainly that is not my way of saying that I intend to preach a long time. But I just want to get settled Uh, into the word here this morning. And Paul writing this address uh, uh, to Christians in Rome. In fact, I believe that if we were to look at verse 7, just beyond where I read this morning, we would find that uh, the apostle Paul was moved of the Holy Ghost uh, uh, to write this epistle uh, to believers that are in Rome. In fact, Verse 7 says, to all that be in Rome, a beloved of God called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we see here that uh, the Apostle Paul is writing uh, uh, to the believers in Rome. And not only that, my dear friend, uh, but we recognize and know that uh, the the body of believers that he was writing to uh, uh, was primarily Gentile in nature. Uh, If you were to go on and look uh, just a few verses down in your your precious Bible there in verse 13, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul, once again, under the influence uh, of the Holy Ghost, uh, writes this. Now I would not have you ignorant Brethren, that oft times I, I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also. Watch your Bible here, even as among other Gentiles. And so uh, we see, we, uh, we look at verse 7, uh, we look at verse 13, uh, and we realize that the Apostle Paul uh, is writing to the believers in Rome. Uh, uh, and, and not only that, but we know that that body of believers uh, is uh, in large part uh, a Gentile body. Uh, uh, clearly there were Jews present. Uh, uh, without any doubt, there were uh, Jewish believers uh, present because we know that uh, the apostle Paul in chapters 8 
chapter 9 and chapter 10 uh, uh, there uh, and chapter 11 uh, will deal with Israel uh, as a nation uh, in their past, uh, in their present and in their future. Uh, and so we know that uh, mm, uh, the Apostle Paul will deal with the nation of Israel. Uh, and we know that there were Jewish believers present. Uh, uh, but it was primarily a Gentile body. Uh, and my friend, uh, when you look at the book of Romans. And I mean hesitant to say this uh, because in the chapters and the pages of this wonderful book uh, uh, there's so much truth uh, uh, there's so much of God's grace uh, and wisdom uh, uh, that it would fail me in a hundred lifetimes uh, uh, to preach uh, all that God has in this book uh, uh, but when I look at it and begin to uh, go through the pages of God's precious word uh, uh, there are some reoccurring themes uh, that I see over and over uh, in the book of of Romans. Uh, in fact, one of the great truths that you find uh, in the book of the Romans in chapter 3 uh, is the guilt of all mankind. The Bible tells us there in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I, I mean, uh, uh, it's a truth, my friend. Uh, it seems like an insurmountable wall. Uh, 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 it is in our flesh. Uh, it's, a, it's a wall that we cannot get over. Uh, uh, it's a wall that we cannot climb or conquer. Uh, but I'm glad uh, that through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, we can have liberty uh, and we can have redemption uh, and we can have fellowship uh, with the Lord. Uh, and Paul here, writing to these Roman believers. Uh, uh, my friend, uh, uh, I notice also, Brother Darrell, uh, uh, that it took the Apostle Paul uh, just 16 verses uh, in this letter to get uh, to this wonderful truth. Uh, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, uh, for it is the power of God unto salvation uh, uh, to everyone that believeth, uh, to the Jew first and also the Greek. And so here we see some reoccurring themes in the book of Romans. We, we see the guilt of mankind in chapter 3. Uh, if you were to turn to chapter 7, uh, uh, there, my friend, you would see, uh, uh, you would read about the sinful tendencies of this flesh. And Paul, having written there under the influence of the Holy Ghost, uh, in Romans chapter 7 and verse 18, uh, has this to say, For I know that it, in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing for to will is present with me but how to perform that which is good I find not oh listen I hey listen my dear friend I, I gave up on this flesh a long time ago I, I realized that this flesh is rotten I, I, it's a sinful I, it's an enmity with God I, I, I believe that a person I, outside the influence of the Holy Ghost I, is capable in this flesh of doing very horrible and sinful things we see this in this wonderful epistle to these Gentile believers and all that are in Rome. That we see the guilt of mankind. We, we see the sinful tendencies of this flesh. Uh, my dear friend, but one of the great, uh, one of the great truths that we find in the book of Romans uh, is in chapter number four. Uh, and there we find out, uh, uh, we see the doctrine uh, and the teaching uh, of justification by faith uh, uh, that were made just or, or that were made righteous uh, by faith. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, we see that there that uh, the Bible says in Romans chapter 3 and verse 28 as that chapter comes to a close. Uh, he says, therefore, uh, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. You go on into chapter 4, and there uh, the Holy Spirit provides us. He uses Abraham. He illustrates the life of Abraham. 
to illustrate this truth of justification by faith. In the first six verses of chapter four, you find out that Abraham was justified apart from works. In verses nine through 12, you find out that Abraham was justified from apart from ordinances. And then in verses 13 through 25, you find out that Abraham was justified apart from the law. What a wonderful truth we have today. And we look in our text. In our text, we'll find our text primarily uh, in verse number one today is where we'll uh, preach from. Primarily verse number one, we preach uh, on this thought. Are you faithful to the place God has called you? Uh, uh, in our text, Paul writes, uh, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, uh, called to be an apostle, uh, separated unto the gospel of God. Uh, no, my friend, uh, uh, you, could, uh, you could say it like this. Uh, in that verse of scripture, uh, uh, we find out that, uh, that Paul has a heavenly master. Uh, and then we find out that uh, Paul has a heavenly ministry. Uh, and then we find out in that verse of scripture uh, uh, that Paul has a heavenly message. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, God commissioned Paul to a great work. He called him uh, to a faithful work. Uh, the apostle was obedient to the gall of God in his life. Uh, uh, when God commissioned him uh, uh, to serve him, uh, uh, he was obedient unto the call of his master. Now I wonder here today, every Christian here, and certainly I'm not to, I know that I am not an apostle Paul. I, hey, listen, I, and I realize that, but every Christian that are, is here today, and all Christians, in fact, uh, God has placed a call in our life. Uh, uh, he's put us in a place of service. Uh, he's put us in a place uh, of faithfulness. He's, he's placed us in a place where, where we can work and serve the Lord. Are you faithful to the God? That God, to the place that God has called you. We look at the heavenly master and the heavenly ministry and the heavenly message. I want, I, I want, I want you to notice something here, my dear friend. Uh, uh, first of all, with the, uh, the divine master or the heavenly master, we see something uh, uh, there in verse 1. Uh, uh, the Bible says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. Oh, listen, I, I mean, uh, in that little simple statement uh, that defines that the Apostle Paul uh, had a heavenly master, uh, there's a priority placed in the Apostle's life. All of a sudden, uh, everything vanishes away. Uh, everything else is rolled back. Uh, everything else is pale. Uh, uh, there's not anything that compares uh, uh, to the call that God has placed uh, in the life of the Apostle Paul uh, uh, to his master, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul could have written a lot of things here. In this introduction to this letter, uh, the Apostle Paul could have, uh, in his introduction, uh, he says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean, he could, have, he could have reminded us right there in the pages of God's Word uh, that he was or uh, was being used to write many of the New Testament epistles. Uh, uh, he could have proclaimed, I, Paul, uh, a writer uh, and a penman of the word of God. I, 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 Paul, who have been used of God to, to write his word, but he did not do that. He could have told you in the opening statement here I, in this first verse, I, he could have said, I, Paul, I, I was born of the tribe of Benjamin. In other words, he could have reminded us that back there in, in times past, his great, great, known beyond grandfather was a man by the name of Saul, uh, of, Tar, uh, 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 of uh, the son of Kish, uh, who would be the first king of Israel. Uh, and how he was a descendant, if you will, uh, of the tribe that gave Israel its first king. I, I, I know, and uh, 
You, you take in our American culture, for instance, and, and there may be people here today that after church will re, uh, let me know and can validate what I'm getting ready to say. But there may be people here today that are descendants of people who came over on the Mayflower. There may be somebody here today that's a descendant of Abraham Lincoln. Now, there may be someone here today whose grandfather fought at Valley Forge with George Washington. Wouldn't that be a great thing? Isn't that something to be uh, proud of, if you will, to know that your roots go all the way back, uh, that your ancestors uh, had a great part uh, in the development of this country? And on the biblical level, Paul could have done the same thing. He could have reminded us that he was a royal descendant of the man that God called to be the first king of Israel. But he did not say he was a writer of the New Testament epistles. And he did not identify himself as a descendant of a king. And my friend, he could have told us that he was born in a city of Tarsus. He said in one place of a no mean city. It was not just an average place. He could have let us know that he came from a very good place. He could have remind us, reminded us that he was raised a fair and kept the law to the letter uh, uh, that he was diligent about God's word uh, he, had, he could have told us that he had studied uh, at the feet of Gamaliel that would have been impressive I, I mean for, for us to know that he had such godly teaching uh, one of the most renowned men of all Israel that Paul had sit at his feet and had learned the word of God. He could have reminded us, my dear friend, that not only was he a Pharisee, glory, but my friend, he could have told us that, that he was acquainted with many of the Greek poets. Paul cites some of them in his writing. He clearly knew some of the Greek poets that you and I might know by name today. He, he had met them and was acquainted with them. Or he could have told us, my friend, in this opening passage of Scripture, he could have reminded you and I that he was saved on the road to Damascus. He could have told us how there was a great light that shined out of heaven, how that God saved him out of his sin and came to him personally and spoke to him and, uh, and, and, and he was converted on the road to Damascus. That'd be a great thing, wouldn't it? You say, what are you saying, preacher? I, I'm saying there's things in life that we hold dear. It means nothing to you and it probably means nothing to Brother Oida. But it's always meant something to me to know that my uncle was preaching when Brother Oida got saved. For some reason, that's important to me. I, I, I hold that dear. It's something that I cherish. Uh, to know that a man that I love and respect so much. Uh, I mean, if we had a hundred Oidas, uh, uh, the world would be a lot better place. And to know, Sister Shelley, uh, uh, that my uncle, uh, uh, our family was preaching when Brother Oida he got saved uh, is a wonderful thing my friend and Paul could have done the same thing uh, uh, he could have he could have told us uh, that he was personally uh, I mean the Lord came to him uh, on the road to Damascus would have been a great thing wouldn't it he could have told us in the opening passage of scripture that he'd been on multiple missionary journeys could have reminded us of all the places he had traveled uh, by land ship and certainly not air <laughs> by land and sea and my friend he could have told us of the uh, he, you know he was bitten by a snake I, I mean uh, uh, that'd be enough to make me have a heart attack I mean he reached down there into the fire by the fire and a, and a viper came out of the out of the wood and latched on to him and he shook it off in the fire I, I mean it was uh, uh, it was uh, uh, he had a lot of wonderful experiences and, and exciting experiences he could have reminded us of all those things how about this one brother Jared he could have opened up the passage of scripture like this Paul a man who was caught up to the third heaven <laughs> 
What about that? I, I mean, modern day evangelists would be on the book signing a circuit. We'd be writing books, uh, the three-step plan on, on what's in heaven and how to get there. Uh, uh, we'd have been, uh, we'd have been uh, utilizing that to promote self. And, and yet the apostle Paul only spoke of it one time and then in the third person. Not even directly about himself. He said, I knew a man speaking of himself. Uh, he could have told us all these things in the opening of this letter. But instead, he had a heavenly master. There was a priority in his life that was more important. And in just it took the apostle Paul just three words to get to this truth. He said, Paul, a servant. Oh, my friend, a servant. Uh, a servant means, uh, uh, it means to be in bondage. Uh, he, uh, he was, a, as, a, as it were, he was a, he was a slave. Uh, I mean, he was very lowly and in a humble position. Uh, I mean, it was not an elevated position. Uh, it was not a position of fame. Uh, it was not a position of celebrityism. But he was a lowly servant. Uh, and who was he a servant of? Uh, uh, the Bible says uh, a servant. Of Jesus Christ. Are you being faithful today. To the place God has called you. Is the Lord the priority in your life? Is the heavenly master uh, the one that died for you, that shed his blood for you? Is the Lord Jesus Christ, is he taking preeminence? Is he taking first place? Is he a place of a special nature and a priority in your life? Or is the Lord taking a back seat to something else? And Paul here, Put all those other things behind him. And he said, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. He had a heavenly master. He realized where his priority uh, was at. Uh, I, I believe with all my heart as a bond servant uh, uh, that he was not cringing in submission. Uh, uh, he, he was not angry about it. Uh, uh, my dad says it like this. He says, I'm a fundamental Bible believing Baptist. But I'm not mad about it. Uh, I mean, some people are angry. Uh, uh, they, seem, uh, uh, they seem agitated and always on edge. They seem fierce. Uh, and Paul was not angry uh, or upset about the place that God had called him to. But rather, he considered it the highest priority in life. Uh, uh, to be a servant uh, of his heavenly master, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm not asking you to answer me here. I'm just saying... And I'm speaking to myself today as well. Is the Lord the priority in our life? When you come to church, I mean, do you come only if there's nothing else to do? I mean, we could take that beyond a lot of things. I mean, is, is the Lord, does he come first? I'm going to tell you something, my friend. Well, glory. I mean, the Lord ought to occupy a special place in our life. In the Bible here in just three words, Paul says a servant of Jesus Christ. He had cheerfully, Paul had cheerfully abandoned any claims that he had on self. I, I mean, uh, uh, he, he had held nothing back. Uh, there was not any part of his life that he was holding on to and clinging to for self. He had abandoned any claims on self and he had given it all to the Lord. He had given himself to the service of the one to whom he belonged. It was not, it was not second nature or it was not, uh, uh, it was not something that was difficult for him to do. I mean, uh, it, was, uh, it was natural. It was natural to Paul. To, he, he, he was a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he had abandoned self and he had turned to the Lord. He had no other Lord and Master except the one who had bled and died for him. Here's a question I have for you today. Oh, dear friend, may we all abandon our self ambitions and strive to be the servant of Jesus Christ. Are you faithful to the place that God has called you? Oh, listen, Paul here being a servant. The Lord Jesus Christ.
This was the example of a servant. Look at with me at Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 7. When Paul said he was a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, he had a great example. The same example that you and I have. And there in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 7, the Bible says, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Oh, the Lord Jesus Christ is our highest example of a servant, my dear friend. And then I see not only a heavenly master, but I see a heavenly ministry. Oh, look, did you notice what he said there? Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. That was the heavenly master. But notice the next phrase, called to be an apostle. Oh, listen, now, that was the, the calling was the heavenly ministry. Paul had a peculiar ministry. It was unlike Peter's and the, the rest of the apostles. He, he was called to be an apostle uh, uh, to the Gentiles. Uh, and he was called to do things uh, and to preach the gospel. And he was called to service uh, and to suffer for the name of the Lord. And he was faithful to that call in his life. Are you being faithful to the place that God has called you? He said here, called to be an apostle. You know what apostle, the word apostle means? It means one who is sent. A messenger. A minister. I mean, Paul was sent of God to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And even though you and I are not Paul's and may not everyone here uh, be a preacher or a pastor, every one of us today has been called to serve the Lord uh, and to have a testimony uh, and to be ready to tell of the hope that lies within us, uh, uh, to tell others what good things, uh, uh, what great things that Jesus has done for us. We've all been called to be a witness and a testimony. Oh, listen, I mean... Uh, when the Holy Ghost moved on the apostle uh, to write this letter to the saints at uh, Rome, he was moved with boldness and great conviction that this was the will of God for his life. And Paul here is very specific under the influence of the Holy Ghost to let you know that not only did he have a heavenly master, but he had a heavenly ministry and he was called to do a work. And because of that work that he was convinced that God had called him to do, there was not anything that was going to cause him uh, uh, to, to, to back up or go to the left or to the right. Uh, he was not in the business of quitting uh, or giving up. Uh, he was convinced uh, with great conviction that this was God's will for his life. He was chosen He was chosen, frozen. He was chosen, called, and commissioned to be a minister of Jesus Christ. Let me ask you this question today. What would cause a man like the Apostle Paul to suffer so many horrible things? For the Lord Jesus Christ. It was because of his heavenly master. It was because of his heavenly ministry. It was because of the divine conviction that he had that this was God's will for his life. He had a, an encounter with the risen Savior and was moved with deep conviction to follow the Lord. That's why I've been song. Brother Carrick. I think it's the one that led us in it today. We sing it, do the revival at least once, maybe twice. I have decided to follow Jesus. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, the song, it's a wonderful song, but all the things that would derail a man's faith and cause him to go another direction. But the writer of the song says, I have decided to follow Jesus. Oh, listen, my friend, are you being faithful? the place that God has called you. Oh, listen, I, I, I ask myself this question. Why do so many pastors abandon their call to a church so easily? How can Sunday school teachers and other Christian workers so be easily abandon their posts? And while there may be any, many reasons why people do this, one thing is certain. If a Christian is not in the will of God, he won't last long. It'll not work out. At the first sign of trouble, trial, or hardship, that preacher, that deacon, that Christian worker will begin. Let me leave this with you this morning.
by God's grace, may we resolve to serve him with boldness to that place of service that he has called us. I want to just say something real quick. We're going to be coming to a close. I feel like the Lord has accomplished the message. But I want, I'd be remiss not to say something about this because after all, it's all about the Lord. But I'm trying to draw your attention today to our service of that Lord, our Lord. And we have a heavenly master, a heavenly ministry, but there was also a heavenly message. Did you notice something there, my friend? Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, that was the heavenly master. Called to be an apostle, that was the heavenly ministry. But notice what it says. Separated unto the gospel of God. That was the heavenly message. And then he says, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. I mean, God did not leave us in the dark concerning his son Jesus Christ he promised uh, and it was uh, in the Old Testament that uh, everything about the coming of his son the Bible tells us in verse 3 concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord uh, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh the Bible reveals to us that the Lord in his flesh was of the seed of David there's no doubt about where the Lord came from in his flesh. But the Bible says in verse 4. And to declare to be the son of God. Uh, with power according to the spirit of holiness. By the resurrection from the dead. And called, Paul called to preach a message. That Jesus Christ was the God man. He was God in the flesh. He was both man and God that, that, he, had, that he came to the sinful world. Uh, that he took upon him the, uh, the nature of this old sinful flesh yet without sin. Uh, that he died at the cross of Calvary. Uh, and thanks be to the Lord. Uh, he arose. Uh, uh, he arose under the power and the spirit uh, of his own holiness. What a wonderful Savior we have today. We serve a risen Savior. And Paul had a heavenly master, a heavenly ministry, and a heavenly message. Let's stand together this morning. Let me repeat my question to you today. Are you being faithful to the place God has called you?